Hello everyone and welcome to this new Unity tutorial where we're going to learn how to implement a simple RTS-like building placement. By the end of this video, we'll have a basic free placement scheme that allows us to click on a button to select a building type to place, move around our map with our mouse to select a position, and finally click to instantly place our building. We'll even add some nice features like cancelling the build, allowing for chain builds, or rotating the Phantom Building Preview to change the orientation of the placed building. As usual, don't forget that you can check out all of the assets and the code from this tutorial in my Unity GitHub repo over here. And with all that said, let's get to it and see how to set up this free placement system. Alright, to begin with, let's see how to create a basic preview of our soon-to-be building, a Phantom Building that we can drag around to pick the ideal spot on the map. We'll use a UI button to trigger the build mode and create this phantom preview, and then we'll implement a simple raycast-based system to have it follow the mouse if we are pointing at the ground. Basically, the idea will be to click on the button to select a type of building to place, more precisely, a building prefab, and then in the callback function linked to this click, create our phantom building based on the referenced building prefab. Once we have this reference prefab and the phantom building, we'll use a raycast to place it on the ground. If you're not too familiar with raycast, I've actually made an entire video on that topic, but in short, the goal is to draw a line from a specific source point in a specific direction, and see where this line intersects with objects in the scene. Here we'll use the current position of our mouse on the screen as the source point, and the forward direction of the camera as the direction, and we'll check for intersections with objects on a custom user-defined layer called ground. This way we'll basically get a hit point on the ground, matching the current mouse position, and we'll be able to anchor our phantom preview to this hit point. Ok, so first things first, let's create a new c script in our project, called Building Placer, and put it on an empty game object in the scene. In this script, we'll create two variables for the reference building prefab and the phantom building to place. We'll also say that the prefab is null when the scene first starts. Then we'll make a public void function to set the prefab, and we'll instantiate the phantom building. Let's say that when it first pops, the preview is hidden because we want it to only appear when we're hovering the ground, and we'll also make sure to destroy any previous previews if need be, so that we don't get duplicates when we click on the buttons multiple times. Ok, we can now assign this function as a callback for the onclick events of our UI buttons in the scene, and drag in our building prefabs to properly reference the building types. Finally, in the update function, we just have to take care of the raycast to make the phantom building follow the mouse. To do this raycast, we'll need four variables. A reference to the main camera, which we can cache in the awake function to avoid unnecessary computations during the game loop. A public layer mask variable to allow us to set the ground layer mask in the inspector. This pops up a drop-down list where we can select one or more layers to create our own mask, and here we just need to select the ground layer. And finally, the ray and raycast state variables that will be filled in the update based on the current mouse position and camera orientation. To compute the ray for raycast, we can take advantage of a nice Unity built-in, which is the camera.screenPointArray method. We only need to pass it the source point in screen space coordinates, so here it's the current mouse position, and it will auto compute a ray that originates from this point and moves in the forward direction of the camera in 3D space. Now that we have this ray, we can perform our recast by calling the physics.raycast method and passing it the ray the recast hit variable to output the first intersection result to if there is one the max distance, and the layers to consider. If there is at least one intersection, then this raycast will return true. So we can wrap this in an if check, and in that case, move our phantom building to the hit point. We'll also ensure that the building is visible in case it was previously hidden, 
And conversely, if we are not hovering the ground and the phantom preview is active, we'll hide it to not confuse the players with an unusable preview. While we're at it, let's also import the Unity Engine.event systems package so that we can enable or disable the preview when we hover and exit a UI element by using the event system.current.is pointer of a game object built in. If we try this out, we see that we already have the base of our free building placement system. We can click on the UI buttons to pick a type of building to place, and then move our cursor around on the ground to pick a spot, and the Phantom Preview automatically updates to tell us where the building will be. The next step is to actually place our building when we click. After checking that the targeted position is indeed valid and doesn't collide with other obstacles. Ok, now that we can pick a building type and move around our Phantom Preview, it's time to actually take care of placing the building at a specific position and exiting the build mode. Plus, we're also going to introduce some logic to check that the current placement is valid and that we can actually build, which will be shown with a transparent green material, or that it's invalid and something blocks the build, which will be shown with a transparent red material. To handle these three states, fixed, valid and invalid, I've prepared a building manager script that I've already added to my prefabs. This script will update the materials of the renderers inside the prefab according to the current state of the building. We can actually test this out in the editor thanks to these custom buttons. And it's also where we'll code the validity checks to ensure there is no obstacle currently blocking the selected build spot. For now, however, this script simply declares an enum with the three possible states for the building. It has references to all the initial materials that it can restore them when the building is fixed, and it contains two util functions, set placement mode and set materials, that update the materials of the renderers and a few booleans to help keep track of the current state of the building. Of course, don't forget that if you want to check it out in details, you can always take a look at the GitHub. But anyway, to start off, let's ignore the validity checks and use this building manager script on our Phantom building instance to make it clearer we are in preview mode and then be able to actually fix the building when we left click. So we'll simply go back to the building place script and update our prepare building function to tell our building manager script that the building is not yet fixed and that it should appear valid when it's first created. Then, inside our Raycast check, we'll also test for left click, and in that case, we'll set the Phantom Building Mode to fixed, and reset our prefab reference and the to build instance to exit build mode. If we replay our game, we see that now the Phantom Building has the transparent green visual until we click somewhere on the ground and actually fix it at a specific position. Once it's fixed, the materials revert to their initial value and the building doesn't follow our mouse anymore. Now the last core feature we need to set up is the placement validity check. For this, a very easy first step is to go and read the has valid placement boolean flag inside our Phantom Building's building manager script when we left click, so that if the placement is not valid, we interrupt the logic and we don't place the building. But obviously for now, this boolean is never set to false, so it doesn't really validate anything. That's why we have to switch over to our building manager class and add a few things to finish up the logic. In order to check that we're not blocked by any obstacle, the idea would be the following. First, we have to create a counter of obstacles, initialized at zero. Then we have to define two Unity built-in hooks in our class, the onTriggerEnter and onTriggerExit functions. Those will be called when another object with a collider on it enters or exits the collider on the same building object as this script. So for this to work, we have to make sure that each of our building prefabs has a collider. For this tutorial, I've kept it simple and used a big bounding box and that they also have a rigid body component with the is kinematic option enabled. Having this rigid body component is mandatory for actually triggering the onTriggerEnter and onTriggerExit functions in our script, 
and setting it to kinematic mode is an easy way to disable all physics and gravity effects. Now, inside our onTriggerEnter function, we want to increase the number of obstacles by 1, because it means that something has entered the area of our building, or that this building has entered the area of something else, and so we shouldn't be able to place it there. Except that, of course, we don't want buildings to revalidate their position after they've been fixed, so we'll need to return early if the building is already fixed. And also, we don't want the ground to count as an obstacle. To check whether the object that triggered the function is the ground, we can once again use our ground layer mask variable from the previous part, and we can access it in the building placer script by turning this class into a singleton. That's okay here since it's a global scene manager and there is only one instance of it at any given time. And then accessing the ground layer mask variable inside. Finally, to check whether our colliding object has a layer inside this mask, we can get its layer property and use this little math formula to compare it to the layer mask. In a nutshell, this is a bit operation that lets us check quickly whether the bits corresponding to our object's layer value are active in the reference layer bit mask, meaning it lets us check if the object's layer is part of the layer mask. And so if the colliding object is indeed the ground, we'll again return early because it shouldn't count as an obstacle. But in any other case, we do increase our obstacles counter, and of course we also need to tell our building to go into invalid mode. Then the onTrigger exit logic is almost identical, but at the end we reduce the number of obstacles by 1, and if we are back to zero obstacles in the counter, we restore the valid state. Our building placement system is now mostly ready and it automatically checks for the validity of the target position to prevent us from building a house on top of a tree or on top of another already placed building. So we've now finished the core building placement system, and we're just going to wrap up this tutorial by boosting it with a few additional operators and handy features. The first extra feature we can add is an easy but essential one. We'll make it so that when we right-click, if we are currently dragging a phantom build into place, this preview is removed, and we exit the build mode. To do this, we just have to go back to our update, and just after checking if we are currently in build mode, we'll look for right-click, and in that case, reset everything. And you see that just with those few lines, we've implemented a console operation in our build system. Okay. That was easy. And the next feature is not going to be much harder, actually. We're going to allow players to build the same type of building several times in a row if they maintain the shift modifier pressed while clicking. This way, you'll be able to easily chain your constructions without having to go back and click on the UI button each time. Again, we just have to modify our update function a bit so that when we left-click, if we are also pressing the shift key, either the left or the right one, we don't reset our variables, but instead make a new phantom building. Now if we press shift while clicking, the previous phantom building becomes a fixed instance, and the new one automatically takes its place as a build preview. Alright, last of all, let's add a basic rotation feature so that players can rotate the buildings by 90 degrees, 180 degrees, or 270 degrees. The point would be to link the spacebar to a 90 degrees rotation so that by pressing this key once or multiple times, you can choose a custom orientation for your building. This sounds simple enough, right? We'll just add a little line in our update to check for a spacebar press, and in that case, we'll rotate our tobuild.transform by 90 degrees around the vertical y axis. Except that if we run this, we get a strange problem where the phantom building rotates once, but then it won't rotate anymore, even if I keep pressing on the spacebar. The reason for that is actually quite surprising, because it's linked to these buttons. The thing is that, by default, Unity's UI is designed to also support keyboard and gamepad navigation. 
which is really cool, but it also means that as soon as you've clicked on something in your UI, your game is in this UI navigation mode. And in this mode, the spacebar is like a click. So basically here, by pressing the spacebar, we are re-clicking our UI button and creating a new phantom building. To avoid this, we can go to our sets building prefab function and just after clicking the button, we'll reuse our event system.current instance to set its currently selected UI game object to null. This way, we are cancelling the default keyboard navigation and we prevent the spacebar from triggering our callback. And there we are! Our phantom building now rotates properly by 90 degrees when we press the spacebar, and once we click, we see it is indeed placed with this new orientation. And with those little extra operators, we've now got a pretty cool free building placement system that allows players to easily pick, place, and even rotate buildings to their liking, just like in many RTS games. And on that note, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this Unity tutorial and that you've learned a few things to implementing a free building placement system. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel to not miss the next ones. And of course, if you have other ideas of Unity tricks that you'd like to learn, don't hesitate to leave a comment. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.